Okay, the Everglades tomatoes have gotten a little out of control. I'm not here for the tomatoes today though. I'm here for their cousin, the potato. Today is potato harvest day. I have a restaurant that is interested in buying our potatoes. I hope that they notice how excellent the flavor is. <laughs> I don't know. They'll be like, these potatoes, these are the best potatoes that we have ever had. But I don't know. You know, you'd like to think these things. It doesn't always work out that way. So you see here, these old potato vines, I pulled these, I don't know, a week or so ago. The old potato vines just go back onto the surface of the ground. Now you don't wanna do this if you're gonna grow potatoes in the same area over and over again, but this area is evolving into a perennial garden and the potatoes were just kind of a fill in the blank for the beginning. And so this area, when I get the potatoes cleared out of here, we will plant it with something that can take the heat so we can keep this ground covered because as I'm uncovering the ground here, it's more to get washed away. It's more to get beaten by the sun and I don't want to do that. And I think what we need is something that fixes soil after this. So I'm going to rotate through here and put in legumes, probably peanuts and southern peas. I love doing this. It's harvesting potatoes. This is like digging for treasure. What a blessing to have so many potatoes. Last time I tried to grow potatoes in Florida, I did so-so. I probably could have just eaten the seed potatoes and had a comparable yield. But this time, I got these guys in in January and February and the fire ants didn't destroy them all. And they seem to really like that Steve's fertilizer mix that we used. And they like this sand, you know, slightly acid. Seems to be good for potatoes. And yesterday, I was thinking about how much fun it would be to pull these. And I had a few things stressing me out. I was out in the car with Rachel in town and I was feeling a little like, oh man, there's so many things that are not the way they're supposed to be. We've been having trouble getting our property to sell. And so we we're kind of stuck in between life in a foreign country and life here. There's a good one. And so I was kind of complaining and then it struck me, what? Complaining is not fun. Nobody wants to hear you complain. Nobody is like, gosh, I'm so glad that person complained at me. So I said to Rachel, I said, you know, I shouldn't complain so much. And she said, why don't we see if we can have negative complaints? So what would a negative complaint be? I asked my son that and he said, well, that sounds worse than a regular complaint because now it's, it's like even more worse. You know, it's like it's, it's a negative complaint. Like you could have positive complaints. I don't think it, no. What I was thinking is more like, well, a negative complaint would be the opposite of complaining. So we're gonna do the opposite of complaining, which would be to be thankful, to be grateful, to dig up potatoes with joy in your heart and thank the Lord for the soil that he gave us that is yielding potatoes. Thank him for inventing the potato. Be thankful that my wife is filming as her arms get weaker and weaker as she tries to hold up the camera as I ramble on and on and on. There's a lot to be thankful for. I know some of you guys are watching and going, you should have a potato fork. You know, one of those scooping forks. I actually had a, uh, I have a digging fork, but unfortunately I was gonna dig up some uh, elderberries 
at a friend's place and then I forgot and I left the fork there at his house, which is, this is, this is common for me to lose things. But I like digging it by hand and in soil that's this soft, it's not really that big a deal. Plus I have lots of child labor. So we have a lot of cull potatoes. These are potatoes that are chewed up or they're a little, there's something wrong with them. They got some scabs on them or whatever. The ones that are larger and aren't too bad will get processed. We can process them out, can them, freeze them, that sort of thing. Probably not good to put into long-term storage because they're not gonna keep very well. But the ones that are really just kind of small and ugly, but there's still some flesh there, those I have been boiling and feeding. That's right, sweetie. I've been boiling them and feeding them to the chickens. Chickens love potatoes, and that's a trick I learned from Carol Depp, who wrote The Resilient Gardener. She takes her cull vegetables, you know, she breeds vegetables, but she takes the culls and the leftovers and the chickens get to eat them. Chickens will just wolf those potatoes down. Is this yours, darling? Oh, there's a potato. Get it. There we go. That's good. Almost every potato in this row has been perfect. There's been a couple, like this one, that have a few holes in it, but it's, at this point, it's rare. And I think that is because these rows here are wider and deeper and fluffier, so the potatoes have a lot more room to grow in. Dad, it would be funny if you took, went to the store and got the biggest potatoes you could find and then covered them over with sand and uh, just like film showing how good the potatoes, how good the, your, your profits were. Oh yeah, potatoes. it looks just like Idaho. You would leave the stickers on them. Well, now we gotta see how much these weigh. This is the fun part. And this is only the first round, there's another probably a wheelbarrow worth out there in the garden still, but I've got to empty this one before I can get to those. Okay, so it is 17 pounds minus three pounds for the bucket, 14 pounds. Fourteen. Fifteen. 17, 15. <laughs> 18. All right, so that's it for these. We gotta go out to the garden and get the rest. How many pounds did we get? 94 today. So 94 today plus, I think we had 80 already. Let's see if we can uh, find another 100 pounds in the garden. So this is the second and final load. This entire area behind me here in the bright burning southern sun is done. So the kids are going to rake up now all of the spent potato plants and we will use them to mulch our trees. And all of the cull potatoes, the potatoes that just aren't nice enough for the kitchen or for selling, those are gonna go be gathered up so we can feed them to the chickens because we're cheap. Chickens go cheap, 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 cheap. You want to guess the weight? Uh, you guess. 65 pounds. That's what I'm going to guess. 65 pounds. You want to make a guess? Seventy. Conservative. It's really fun to guess women's weight. It's one of my hobbies. How many potatoes? 
torpedoes do you think that woman weighs? Fifteen. That thing is the size of a bird. Fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eight. That is the end of the potatoes for this year. All right, so let me ask my scribe here. What's the uh, what's the final total? Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. And I said sixty-five, and you said seventy. Yep. I was flattering those potatoes. They look thin. They did look thin. They look like thin potatoes. Beautiful potatoes. They look young too. Very young potatoes. They're definitely not out of their 20s. So these are our cull potatoes which are going to our little feathered friends. These are going picky. These are all for picky. All those extra potatoes, which are not a waste, gallons and gallons of them, probably another, I don't know, 60 pounds or so that were not really good enough to the table. And those are the ones that come here and give them to the chickens. And yeah, so we get to eat some, chickens get to eat some, and there's no waste. Anyhow guys, we'll uh, be done with potatoes for this year, I guess. We'll be eating them for a long time. But we're done with growing them for this year, and we're not gonna get to plant them again until next spring. And now we know that the best time to plant the potatoes was the end of January here. Those did the best. So hopefully that holds true for next year, but we'll try it again. We did a few rounds. Started in January, did another round in the middle of February, did another round March 1st, and I, I think that those ones that we planted early actually did the best. So, hey, it's a lot of fun planting potatoes. If you haven't done it before, I highly recommend it. And the flavor of homegrown potatoes cannot be beaten. Catch you all next time. And until then, your thumbs always be green. I went to see David, David the Good. We listened to Portis Head and drank spiced rum. Be thankful that my wife is filming as her arms get weaker and weaker as she tries to hold up the camera as I ramble on and on and on. There's a lot to be thankful for. How are your arms? Fine. <laughs> you can't complain now. <laughs>